well. It is time to have ourselves a Christmas baking day. I'm really excited. I always love to have an annual Christmas baking session or maybe a few of them. And on the menu today, we're going to be making chocolate crinkle cookies, which is a beautiful cookie with a chocolatey fudgy dough with powdered sugar all around it. So before you bake them, they look like these cute little snowballs, but after you bake them, they expand into this crinkle cookie that I very much enjoy and I'm such a chocolate lover so I always gravitate towards recipes with chocolate so we'll have those and then I also hopefully this will turn out okay but I want to try to make miniature gingerbread mug toppers and I have this little cookie cutter situation so we can hopefully make this come to life but Essentially, we're going to cut the gingerbread dough and then try to form it into these tiny little gingerbread houses that you can put on the side of your mug. So it's super adorable idea and I hope it turns out, but I think we should go ahead and start with the gingerbread so that the cookies have enough time to cool and then we'll ice them and try to form our little homes. So that's the plan, but I'm really excited to spend time with you all today. Since we're making the crinkle cookies from scratch, I did not want to bite off more than I could chew, so I got the pre-made gingerbread cookie dough. So I believe all we have to do is roll it out and then cut it into the shapes, which is just fabulous and saves a lot of time. Yep, we heat our oven, cut roll of dough in half, shape into ball, flatten, roll, cut, bake. Sounds easy enough, hopefully. I know I was thinking this would be better too, just to sort of have a full proof way of making sure that the cookie dough stays in the shapes because there's been too many times where I have made a dough from scratch, then cut it into the shapes I want, and then in the oven it expands to a totally different shape. So hopefully this will work out okay. And I have a few other cookie cutters, Christmassy cookie cutters that we'll probably use as well depending on how much dough the house molds take up. I've been working on transferring the cut pieces over to the baking sheet, but it has been a challenge because the dough is so soft and fragile and the pieces are quite small. So when I transfer them over to the baking sheet, they definitely sort of um, either break or become a little bit uh, quirky out of their mold, as you can see. So I think what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to bake what I have so far and see how it turns out as like a little test run experiment. This is what we have so far. And then for I'm going to roll the rest of this up and put it in the fridge for a little bit so that it can firm up. And then I'm going to put parchment paper down, cut it on the parchment, roll it out, cut it on the parchment paper and then transfer it to the baking sheet. I just feel like that'll be a lot more seamless, hopefully.
other news, the first batch that we put in the oven turned out really nice. The shape looks pretty good, but as you can see, some of the pieces are uneven because they moved around so much as I was pulling them up from the counter. So hopefully our second batch will be a bit more symmetrical, but they still look really cute. That was a doozy, but we did it and we have a lot to work with. I also have some more in the oven and we still had extra cookie dough. So we have a lot of gingerbread, but once we start making them into the houses, it'll, since there's so many pieces that go into the house, it'll start dwindling and won't look like as much. And I just like to have extras so that if we have some snafus, we can work with that. But now I want to, before, before we start working on our crinkle cookies, I want to make some coffee. cookie time. I'm following Sally's Baking Edition recipe. It's a double chocolate crinkle cookie recipe. So again, super fudgy and brownie like. I am making a few modifications to the recipe though. Instead of the stick of butter, I'm going to use coconut oil. I love baking with coconut oil and it's a really great non-dairy option. We're going to our friend's house for dinner tonight and she has a sensitivity to dairy. So I'm going to use this instead so it won't be hard on her stomach. And then the other modification is an unintentional modification, but so she wants you to mix it all with the, with the paddle attachment to either your stand mixer or your handheld mixer. And I do have a stand mixer I was planning to use, but the bowl that goes with our stand mixer, I'm currently using for sourdough. I have a big, batch of sourdough bread ready to shape later this afternoon and I really didn't want to transfer it so I was like oh I'll just use the handheld mixer no problem but I don't have a paddle attachment for the handheld mixer so I just have the two little whisk like attachments so hopefully that won't be a big deal at all but we'll see you know with baking you could do like one wrong move and it'd be a disaster but hopefully not Another thing is too, she wants you to chill the dough in the fridge for three hours and we don't have that kind of time today. So we are just going to pop it in the freezer for one hour. That's my plan. I'll keep you updated. taste test of the dough and it is divine and now we're gonna add the semi-sweet chocolate chips you can use regular size or mini ones and I think the mini ones are fun because they just spread out into every bite even more Switching gears again, and now we're going to make our icing for our gingerbread miniature houses. 
and I just looked up a recipe for the best gingerbread house icing specifically. I was just planning to use confectionery sugar and egg whites, but then I also found this recipe and she said to use cream of tartar. And I happen to have cream of tartar because we made meringues in the fall, these mushroom meringues, they're really cute. And so since I have it, I'm like, okay, I'm going to follow this recipe and hopefully this will be our secret weapon because... And you can always thicken the icing by making it or adding more of the powdered sugar, but I'm feeling good about this cream of tartar. I think it'll really help it to be sticky and maybe a little fluffier too, but we'll go ahead and make that. I'm not sure how much, I think I'm just going to start with a small batch and then we'll go from there and see how it turns out. Our gingerbread icing station the icing seems to be good it seems nice and sticky and that it'll be firm enough hopefully it's so frustrating when you are trying to construct a gingerbread house but the icing is just too watery or something and it does not do its job and the gingerbread house just slides apart and deconstructs so hoping that is not our story today but yeah I added a little bit of lemon juice into the icing mixture because I needed it a tad bit uh, more liquidy because I kind of tweaked the measurements because I just wanted to start out with a little bit of icing and then if we need more then we can make more later but yeah hopefully it'll work out also I have to say it's been so lovely wearing this apron I need to wear aprons more often I have a little bit of a collection but when I'm just cooking dinner or something during the day I kind of forget but when I'm baking I typically remember to wear aprons and it's so nice to just wipe your hands <laughs> on your outfit essentially it's been Quite lovely and this one is from the thrift store this apron so it's very Christmassy and getting me in the mood but let's try our hand at making these little gingerbread homes Merry Christmas, baby. Rain is coming out to play. Santa Claus is packing the presents, making sure you've been behaving okay. Merry Christmas, honey. Yeah. The snowman's dusting off his hat. On the show for everybody to give them a smile that lasts another year. There's something that happens with sleigh bells are ringing when December is when the children are singing. Yeah, it's Merry Christmas, baby. Merry Christmas, baby. The snow is laying two feet deep. Now wish upon a falling star so all your secret dreams can come true. These little gingerbread houses have been a labor of love. I've made about four and a half so far. I'm I'm learning how to best do it because at first it was very frustrating just to get it stabilized and firm enough to where I could add the additional components. So I'm definitely getting better and I've found out that it's 
it's much better just to let part of it sit and sort of firm up and become more sturdy before adding the additional pieces so I've been doing the roof and then letting that sit and then adding the other sides of the house but they're so cute they're just really precious I'm scared to touch them because I still feel like they're pretty fragile and they need to set for a bit longer but definitely time consuming and I botched a couple of them they just ended up breaking so it's better just to take your time if you end up doing this and put on a Christmas movie or something because like I said it is time consuming but I think they're worth it because they really are that cute and we're gonna go ahead and finish the crinkle cookies now essentially all we have to do is roll them in a ball dunk them in sugar bake them in the oven so hopefully that'll be pretty effortless and we'll get to enjoy some of those soon smell absolutely phenomenal and I'm also going to sprinkle a little bit of these sea salt flakes on top of each one I love adding these flakes onto pretty much every baked good I make it just adds such a great addition so I just sprinkle it on top and with these it kind of settles into the cracks but I also lightly press them down Okay, um, I did try it already because I was really hungry and it smelled amazing oh and it was so good. Okay, let's get one off what of that. What is this stuff? That's just like leftover cookie dough. I'm going to put it on oh. top of a coffee. That's fine. Yeah, there's lots of little mini chocolate chips. Okay, is it here's, warm? Oh no, I just dropped some. This one's pretty warm, I think. Yeah. Super, super cute. Oh, oh sorry. he's pulling yeah. out the trash can and moving the tripod. Okay, here you go. <laughs> smells very good. Mm -hmm. Very we warming. We are chocolate lovers. Mm -hmm. Feels like I'm drinking hot chocolate through my nose. <laughs> Whoa. That's quite the description. It's like a brownie cookie. I'm having troubles with this tripod. Sorry for all the movement. <laughs> Is that the best cookie you've ever had? You guys know he's so honest with his reviews too, so... Quite it's so good if you're obsessed with so chocolate to make these and the powdered sugar around it is so good a little bit of sea salt flakes uh -huh. so what's different than like a normal chocolate chip cookie well it's a chocolate dough as well so it's double chocolate really chocolate dough and then it's like more airy maybe mm -hmm. there's like crispier um seems oh, a little yeah. less dense than like the chocolate chip cookies yeah well the outside it's powdered sugar so it adds like a nice texture to the outer layer yeah it's beautiful really, really and good. i think oh no oh yeah it is kind of crumbly <laughs> eating it off the floor it's like a i will say the coconut oil instead of butter i think that mm. makes it better honestly and when i mm. took it out of the fridge because mm. you were supposed to let it cool in the fridge for a while when i took it out it was a lot more hard and firm than it probably would be with butter because the coconut oil solidifies a lot faster than butter does so something to keep in mind but I really love it with the coconut oil what a baking adventure what a day I'm so happy with our creations definitely ready to relax and eat something savory because I've just been munching on all of these baked goods all day but I'll Great. also insert photos and videos of the little mug toppers once we enjoy it on top of hot cocoa or coffee. But, oh, there's a timer for our last <laughs> batch of cookies. But thank you so much for watching and being here. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your holiday season. And I cannot wait to see you next. Bye. Bye. Where's Bye. Bye.